Welcome to episode 65 of Instant Expertise Marketing. Once again, we appreciate you listening in. We're here today to help you make your trade show investment worthwhile. You see, all too often, marketers drop big money on trade shows, on conferences, and on other events without necessarily recapturing much of an ROI. And we're here today to help you fix that. I'm Yvette Brown, co-founder of X Promos. I became an entrepreneur at 23 by starting a promotions agency with my then 29-year-old business partner, Sherry Nomadi. That's me. I'm Sherry Nomadi. And you guys know Yvette and I always approach business from opposite ends of the spectrum. And that's great for you guys because we really hash it out and we always come to the same conclusions on how to help our clients succeed. You know, over the years, clients have often asked us to help them meet specific goals with their trade shows and conferences, whether that's to drive attendance, bring people to their booth, or just dem uh, generate some demos and sales. And typically, I'm going to admit that we get the calls because the clients just aren't happy with their previous results, right? Absolutely. And to be clear, we are not trade show booth builders, right? Like that is not right. our, our deal at all. What we do is we bring the show. We bring the showtime element that gives a reason for engagement and that missing audience connection to your events. Of course, this is all while we are sneakily delivering on both primary and typically secondary marketing objectives, just as we've uh, been directed by the clients. And it's been our experience that marketers typically fail to get the results that they're looking for at trade shows and conferences and events because of the following three things. Number one, they do not seize the opportunity to attract and engage their prospects. Number two, they don't think of their booth footprint as a show. And lastly, they don't put much thought into what their giveaway is going to be. Oh my gosh, that last point is absolutely true, Sherry. And you know, further to Sherry's point, it's really not enough that your prospects are at an event, okay? You still need to give them a very good reason to visit your booth and engage. And once they're there, you're going to want to provide your best prospects with a positive, lasting memory of their encounter with you. And that is really the role of a giveaway. Yeah, we have found that the best way to accomplish this goal is to create a show something that attracts a crowd because attracting a crowd naturally attracts a bigger crowd. Right. And crowds draw in more people thanks to several triggers like social validation, curiosity, FOMO, entertainment, and even emotional contagion. People see others happy and they hope to have that same exact experience. Yeah, that's all very true. And of course, the show is really only the beginning, right? We have all been to trade shows where there has been like an awkward attempt to draw a crowd. You know, back in the day at E3, for instance, they were notorious for using these scantily clad brand ambassadors to draw, to draw their audience. And while that certainly did bring their audience into their booth, Generally, their whole strategy started and ended with those models, and those attendees failed to connect with the exhibitor beyond checking out the eye candy they had available. And really, to make a positive impression on your target audience, the show must relate directly to your brand for what you're promoting and your overall trade show goals. So for instance, we help clients promote a new mobile app. And we did this by creating a vending machine that magically dispensed gifts when you used your mobile phone to tweet about it. And the concept hit on all cylinders and checked all the boxes, starting with drawing this huge crowd. Right. And that was one of my favorite events for sure. But like speaking of those boxes that Sherry mentioned, let's get into the five must haves to nail your trade show. Number one, as we just described, is 
that your activation must be crowd attracting. That magic bending machine is a great example of it because, first of all, it tied so closely to what we were promoting, which was a mobile app. And another, like, way different example is a recent event that we just completed where we did live T-shirt printing. Yeah, that is one of the greatest examples, Yvette, because it's really a low-tech thing, and it's a great new twist on an old idea of T-shirt giveaways, right? So if you haven't seen live t-shirt printers on site with a carousel of four different screens, attendees get to choose their own design, their own shirt size, and it's making a show. And it's also personalization out of the t-shirt process. So we had a huge crowd the entire 10-hour days back to back to back. Yep. And really, in our case, it was really the perfect concept for what the client wanted to do, because it not only drew the crowd in and they remained, like Sherry said, through the four day event, but it gave our client the time they needed to chat with the customers that were in line about the initiative that they were promoting at the time. Yeah, it delivered even more because we were able to ask the attendees to complete a short survey in order to claim their t-shirt. And the t-shirts were coveted enough that this was really a very reasonable ask. It allowed our client to gather some intel from attendees that they would not have otherwise been able to get from them. And the same intel was passed along to upper management, making our client look like a hero for all these insights that they gathered. And they were the hit of the trade show. Totally. It was like totally a win. And, you know, I think our point here is that your show doesn't have to be expensive. Now, we are always big believers in new technology and new stuff, but it doesn't have to be that way. It -hmm. just needs to be something that creates a show and attracts a crowd and be engaging, which is your must-have number two. You know, as the T-shirt example pointed out, the engagement wasn't complicated, but it was appealing. And uh, another super simple example of this education, this type of engagement that I have never seen fail, believe it or not, and as much as I'm even, even I'm skeptical about it, is the trusty old spin wheel. Gosh, people will stand in line for like 40 deep. (laughs) Right? (laughs) You've seen it. Anyway, nothing makes a sad pile of giveaways look better than to have attendees spin for a chance to win something even better, even when they know that they're likely to only get the low end prize. But of course, we don't recommend using uninspiring items ever, guys. But if you're strapped and you can't do anything else, put your giveaways on a spin wheel and at least create some excitement for your audience. I'm telling you, we've seen it time and time again. People will stand in line just to watch other people win. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And spin wheels aren't that expensive. I think if you go to our blog, we actually have a link to a resource that's very um, inexpensive and easy to customize and you can use over and over again. But Mm -hmm. anyway, number three on your list of must-haves is novelty, right? People crave newness and innovation. You guys hear us talk about it all the time. That's why consumer packaged goods brands are always coming out with new flavors, new sizes, packaging, something seasonal. It's because our brains need something new and fresh to stay engaged and interested. Okay, Technology like our vending machine and even the live printing booth are examples of such novelty, right? You don't see it every day. This looks fun, right? Fun promotional items can also fit this bill. You know, I remember a few years ago, Sherry, you probably remember this. Everyone at this business uh, trade conference we were at clamored for this silly little um, free uh, promo item. And it was a bouncy ball that lit up when you bounced it. Like that was it. That's all it did. But they were so fun and new at the time that everybody at the show wanted one. And everybody was buzzing about like, where'd you get that? And they were trying to figure it out. And, you know, it was definitely the talk of that trade show. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, You know, we've already alluded to what number four is, and that must have is relevance. The best trade show giveaways relate clearly to what your brand's unique selling proposition and campaign messaging is. 
This is really where the heart of the creativity comes in. So for instance, you can give away inexpensive sunglasses if you're offering a test drive of your product. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even if you're having a driving or a flying simulator in your booth, making the giveaway really connects that critical for, it's just so, so critical for retention. After the show, you need your attendees to remember you long enough for sales follow-up which is ideally within 48 hours. Did you hear that? Call those people within two days after seeing them. Write that then down, decide, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we know this is something that doesn't always happen. But think about the fact that the memories are tied to emotion and they last longer and it helps the prospect to know, like, and trust you. Absolutely. So and that's, creative and follow up. That's a hypercritical point for sure. And the last must have is may seem really obvious, but we did want to address it to you because sometimes you have to kind of work around or work through it. Number five is brand your giveaway. Now, in our mind, this is not a deal breaker. And like I said, there are workarounds. So generally speaking, you're going to want to put your brand, your logo on the item if you can. But sometimes you can't do it, right? Maybe you're... Uh, not buy enough items to warrant a customization. Maybe your perfect item is small, like a pair of, you know, um, AirPods or something like that, where it's just not going to get seen around the show and things like that. Um, in cases like that, one of the ways that we've overcome this branding challenge is to create a supporting branded piece. And this could be like a carrying case where you can easily put your brand logo on it and still um, you know, give it away like that. Or if you're giving away something that is truly coveted, you can follow the advice of John Rulin. He wrote a book that we recommend to everybody called Giftology, The Art and Science of Using Gifts to Cut Through the Noise, Increase Referrals, and Strengthen Client Retention. I know it's really long, but if you just look up <laughs> Giftology, you'll find them. Yeah. He says... The gift should be all about the recipient, not about the brand and the giver. And that just kind of makes you feel better about sometimes, you know, if you're giving away something coveted, people will remember where they got it. Yeah. That's right. In other words, if you're giving away something of meaningful value, like say a higher value giveaway that attendees can win and earn, it's okay not to brand them because- totally. You truly created a memorable experience and your attendees won't forget where they got that. Yeah, and that's really important. But, you know, and that's that's our five big things. But before we wrap up, I want to address one more thing. In short, every trade show is different mm -hmm. and every brand is different. So the point of the story is there is no one singular path to trade show success, especially because shows often attract crowds that are bigger and more diverse than just your ideal customer persona. And each team is managing a different set of objectives. And that's the benefit and the challenge, you bet. Every yeah. marketer can create a unique experience at an event that makes their brand memorable, connecting in person with their audience. Yeah, and speaking of audience, I want to further address how you can deal with events where not everybody there is your ideal customer. So one example that comes to mind is this event where it was a festival that we attended on behalf of our client. They were a beauty school, and they wanted us to set up a booth for them. They needed to drive new student leads, but they also wanted to let the local community know that they offered quality, inexpensive treatments at their local beauty school. So up to this point, whenever they did events, they underperformed in terms of lead generation. And so what do we do? Well, if you've been listening for the last few minutes, you probably know we created a show. We offered people who came to the booth a free makeover, right? Mm -hmm. And this was so that the people could see firsthand the work of the students, because it was actually students that were running the booth and doing these makeovers. And we had an amazing MC at the event who really made the reveal of everyone who was getting a makeover a big show, which in and of itself drew its own crowd. 
Absolutely. And I mean, that's this is a great example of one of our many that we have really created a show. But meanwhile, we have this team of brand ambassadors and we dress them in these super bright colored outfits and branded T-shirts. And they went through and combed the crowds looking and gathering contact info from potential students. And in the end, we greatly exceeded our target numbers while also raising awareness of the local school and its services. Yeah, and just to, to not to belabor the point, but we basically hit two big objectives for that one client at the same event. And yeah. I think that was a pretty big win. Absolutely. Um, you know, another way that you can handle events where not all the attendees are qualified is to add a VIP section to your setup. Mm -hmm. You know, again, this is going to yeah. depend on your events, but as an example with Makita, which I think we've talked about before, we exhibited at events um, where we had the 53-foot truck, and it was always a mix of prospects and general population, and we had an opportunity to invite our ideal um, customers to enter the upper deck of the trailer and to be a part of kind of a, an exclusive event within the event, which was really cool. Yeah, manage your giveaways. Find a subtle way to offer the good stuff only to those who really qualify or are willing to share their contact information or engage with your sales team. Yeah, that's a great idea. Now, I do want you to be mindful of your audience at large because it, it is bad to refuse a small giveaway item to someone who's asking for it. Maybe they're not one of your biggest prospects. Maybe they're not even a prospect, but they could be an end user. They could be someone that could refer someone to you. So consider using a low-end giveaway or entertainment for the rest of the crowd. Honestly, I hate to say it, but Sherry, I think you know this. Like We have been at events together. The licensing show is one that comes to mind where they had some folks there that had some really cool giveaways, not expensive, just like a really cool little, you know, branded promo item that, you know, as a creative, I really had to have or whatever, but I was flat out refused and they were kind of yeah. rude about it. And I just thought, wow, that is, you know, I am as an agency, certainly I have some influence in the space and all of that. And it just right. wasn't good form the way they would handle that. And so be very mindful of that because you are managing a bigger audience of like how you hand out and show what you have and who you want to share it with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, be clear on your objectives. At some events, the goal is to just boost brand awareness while others are looking to generate leads or actually write orders. But connect your reward with your main core objective. Yeah. And, you know, just to go back a step, you know, as we've been talking about, you know, and this is really our core point for today, you've already spent a ton of money to to put this show on, you know, from the cost of the attendance, the booth, the staff, the whole bit. What we're really imploring you guys to do is do not cheap out or overlook the experience for the attendees. And like Sherry said, once you kind of know your objectives and what you're trying to do, go build a crowd attracting experience. Create mm -hmm. some element, some element of a show that connects your brand's USP or campaign, men uh, campaign messaging. Make sure it connects. Then offer a novel, relevant, branded item to your prospect in exchange for an action that aligns with your goal. Yep, and make that interaction fun. So that's it in a nutshell. Assess your trade show activations against these criteria and you'll be much more likely to hit your target goals. Yeah, and one last point that we briefly touched on, implore implore your team to follow up immediately after the show with the leads captured. All too often, I can't tell you how many times we have seen this with every level of clients from a mid-sized brand to an enterprise brand where they've let their leads grow cold because maybe marketing took too long to compile the list for sales 
or sales is dragging their feet when they came back to get going on the follow-up. This piece is so critical. The best practices, this isn't us making it up, best practices show that the ideal time for follow-up is 24 to 48 hours after an event. So please do not let your efforts go to waste. Make sure you have that system in place before you go on how you're gonna manage follow-ups as soon as you get back in the office. Outstanding point, Yvette, and that is the perfect way to close this one. Yep, and we really hope this framework has helped you know, which has helped us support clients so well over the years can help you too. Of course, as always, reach out to us at xpromos.com if you need a fresh perspective on your next trade show. Thanks for listening today. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get alerted on new content and join our newsletter for even more in-depth coverage. Just look for the link in the show notes. See you later.